on what was, is, and will be the most tragic or one of the most tragic days in American history. And believe me, it could have been a whole lot worse. Former President Donald J. Trump survived an assassination attempt last night at one of his rallies. Um, if, if the bullet had just gone, you know, a millimeter in another direction, very well could be looking at the former president actually dead last night and the leading candidate for the Republican Party to go up against Joe Biden in just a few months. Absolutely horrific that we've gotten to this point in the country where the boiling point is so high that we're actually going and trying to assassinate uh, a former president and very well someone who may actually end up winning the election if polls are showing what's actually going to end up happening. Now, who exactly was responsible for this taking place? Well, we could have multiple answers for that. The short answer, of course, is a, a younger man. I believe he was in his uh, younger 20s. And I'm not gonna give his name directly because I don't want to give this person uh, any more attention than what he's already getting. And believe me, you can just you know, turn on the news, you'll get his name. You can go on X or any other platform, you'll get his name. You'll be able to see him walking the stage at his high school graduation. Now, believe it or not, he's actually a resident of Pennsylvania and he was a registered Republican. However, he actually donated $15, I believe it was back in 2021. And it was uh, to uh, the pretty much donating to the Democrats. It was like to a progressive, like vote blue. Um, so a lot of people are speculating that he was actually a Democrat, but he registered as a Republican because in Pennsylvania, it's a closed primary state, which pretty much means that you can only vote in your party's primary. So a lot of people might you know, register as Republicans. That way they can go and vote in the, uh, the, the Republican primary and vote for the uh, the worst candidate pretty much. So their, their Democrats can have a better chance of winning. Um, and then other people, of course, can say other than this person, it's really, you know, uh, perhaps Biden's fault. It's perhaps the media's fault. Because if you're gonna go out and blame someone like Donald Trump for January 6th taking place or other violence taking place in the country, uh, right-wing violence, then you also had to blame Joe Biden and the media for comparing Trump to people like Hitler, uh, which, you know, obviously Trump is nowhere near Hitler. Putting Trump and Hitler in the same sentence is absolutely ridiculous. He's not going out and murdering tons of people. Um, so it just, you know, it, the, the media really rising the temperature, calling Trump this terrible person, Biden coming out and saying that we need to put a bullseye around Trump now after the debate. You could very easily put them as being just as responsible if you're going to blame Trump for January 6th taking place. Uh, here is Joy Ann Reed, just for an example, saying that we must keep Hitler out of the White House. Watch. And then let me know who I got to vote for to keep Hitler out the White House. That's it. I'm done. Oh, and by the way, if it's Biden in a coma, I'm going to vote for Biden in a coma. I don't even really particularly like the guy. I, a lot of his policy, don't like him. He's not Donald Trump, right? Yeah. Hitler, White House, we keeping them out, keeping Project 2025 out. That's all I care about. Up and down the ballot from the root of... Now, perhaps one of the most shocking things about this assassination attempt is that we had numerous spectators actually see this shooter setting up and they were pointing to the police like, look at this guy, he has a gun, he has a gun. Shoot him down, do something, do something. And I guess the police were just like, huh, what? We don't see the person. Like they were just acting completely dumb about it. So perhaps were they somehow involved in it allegedly as well? Let's go ahead and watch a couple of examples of that. Just take me back. Um, what were you doing before the shooting happened? And then what did you see in here? Um, I was just hanging, standing there like everybody else, waiting for Trump. And we, as Trump started, we I noticed two officers that were looking for something or somebody. I was, so I was looking around myself and seeing a guy on top of one of the buildings, go in between one building to the next, and went and told the officer that he was up there. And when I went back to my spot, I heard that people could s still see the, sh the person from where they were standing. So I checked that out and I went and went back to tell the officer that if he came over there, he could see them. And when I turned my back is when the shots when the shots started and then it was it took me a second or two to figure out exactly what it was and then it was just getting out of there and helping helping some some other person out with her child and 
we got out and that was that was the end of that and I went and left and that was all. And watch the, and listen to the rally, right? We couldn't see them, but we could hear them. So we walked up and probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking, I'm estimating here, I have no idea, I've, you know, but um, we noticed the guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, and, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle, absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. He, you know, he's, he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two, three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? A hundred percent. hundred percent. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You saw him up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. At least three and to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. police in the Secret Service? We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. Did you see, I mean, obviously everyone, when the shooting started, everyone was very panicked. Did, oh, you, uh, did you see what happened to him at all? Oh, yeah, they blew his head off. Okay, sorry. Secret Service just, blew his head off. Okay, we just be careful because we don't quite know who's watching, but you, you're pretty sure they, they, they shot the guy? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, okay. Yep. You, you saw that happen? Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. And did you see them go up to him afterwards or...? They, yeah, they crawled up on the roof. They had their guns pointed at him, make sure he was dead. He was dead, and that was it. It was over. So just absolutely ridiculous that we have numerous people, numerous spectators there pointing out to the police that this guy is up there. I don't know how these secret service for the police aren't you know, taking action before this guy is able to fire off live rounds. I uh, know uh, Trump did take to his true social uh, last night to make a statement. He said, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all of law enforcement for the rapid response on the shooting that just took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person of the rally who was killed and also to the family of another person that was badly injured. It is incredible that such an act can take place in our country. Nothing is known at this time about the shooter who is now dead. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong, that I heard a whizzing sound, shots, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. God bless America. And then, of course, when asked how the shooter was able to make the assassination attempt, we had the FBI special agent saying, quote, there's going to be a long investigation. It is surprising the Secret Service needs to answer that question. Watch. Again, we're still, still working through the security apparatus that the Secret Service had in place, what potentially happened. That There's going to be a long investigation into exactly what took place and how the individual was able to get access to the location what type of weapon he had, all that it is really days, weeks, and months of investigation. It is, it is surprising, but, but again, to get the true, all the details of that will come out later in investigation. Again, the Secret Service really needs to answer that question. They conduct the initial site survey. They do the initial security assessments and determine where the different security locations should be, and they're the ones who are in charge of securing the scene. We, along with other state and local assets, are there to support the Secret Service and their mission. And here is the current president and Joe Biden asking if he thought this was an assassination attempt. Let's watch his response. Do you think it was an assassination attempt? I don't know enough to, I, I, have, I, have, an, I have an opinion, but I don't have any facts. So I want to make sure we have all the facts before I make some comment, any more comments. Thank you. So again, who exactly was responsible for all that? Once again, we do have the name of the person. I'm not going to give his name on this channel. You could look him up 
uh, online. You'll e easily be able to find his name, pictures, some of them very graphic, of course, of him being shot. And again, I mean, they were going after Trump in numerous ways. They've been going after Trump since 2016. They've been trying to, you know, drag his name through the mud. They've been trying to jail him, trying to silence him with the gag orders. And now they're trying to assassinate him. And it's honestly, I'm really just not all that surprised. I think many of us actually saw this coming that eventually there probably would be some type of assassination attempt. And in the future, you have to wonder, you know, what extra security measures they're going to be putting in place. Trump is definitely a man of the people. I can't personally see him stopping campaigning. He's definitely going to continue his rallies. He, he enjoys doing the rallies, but they definitely have to step up the security. And you have to wonder, like, how badly do these powerful people, um, you know, want Trump dead? They, they definitely do not want Trump back in the White House. That's very much a fact right there. Uh, leave your thoughts and comments below how you think he should give his future rallies. How do you think they should step up security? He needs to have some type of bulletproof glass almost around him, but I, I can't see him actually going out and doing that. We'll have to see what happens. But again, just a horrific event that took place and something that definitely should not be repeated. Just very, just a, a tragic day but definitely could have been a lot more tragic. But of course, again, leave your thoughts and comments below on all this, but that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And of course, if you would like to grab one free stock from Robinhood, it's gonna be valued up to $200. You can go ahead and grab that in a pinned comment below. And then of course, whenever you sign up to Robinhood, all you have to do is link a bank account. You do not have to make an opening deposit. Once you link your bank account, you will be receiving that one free stock worth, once again, all the way up to $200. So I'll see you guys in the next video.